but let's start with a factor of the future using 5G connectivity. In this demo, we have the Edge Cloud, which consists of Comp Server and the PPP Grandmaster, in addition to Genobi 5G Core and GPS. Uh, there's also OTA testbed, which consists of four transmission and reception points, and they are serving four uh, different IoT devices. In this particular, in the beginning, we can see that um, there is no uh, TSN enabled, and now all the IoT devices are not synchronized. They have their own separate timing. And we can also see that there's no comp enabled. In a sense, there's a single, uh, the device is served by a single transmission and a reception point, and there's no comp. It's the first demo. Once TSN is enabled, we have the PTP Grandmaster generate the source clock, and that timing information is sent from Gino B to TRP, and then TRP send the timing information to the individual IoT devices. In this way, all the devices can be synchronized up to a tight synchronization requirement. Why is a TSN important? in the future factory. So let's look at uh, some of the examples which we show here. With the TSN, it allows a synchronized control among all the devices. So in this particular case, we can see that we have the smart camera which takes the photos of the objects, and then it uses onboard AI for object classification and recognition and send that information to PLC. Once the PLC has this information, it will send a command to a robotic arm, uh, as well as a gates to perform the synchronized behavior. We also notice that we, ena we enable the comp for the both downlink and uplink, uh, so that you can see that each device can get a signal from multiple transmission and reception points, so this allows that in case the wireless signal from a subset of TRPs getting faded or blocked, we still have this useful signal from the other TRP, which can ensure the successful delivery of the packet. Besides the TSN and COMP, we are also going to showcase how to improve the network efficiency and capacity and improve the latency by using the direct UE to UE communication. Zoom in to, to the layout of the demo. So in this particular demo, we have four transmission and reception points, and then they are serving four devices. On network side, we have this uh, high-performance computing platform used to support time-sensitive sens synchronization as well as a comp for the ultra-reliability and, uh, and low-latency communication. When we enable the TSN, we can see that okay, all the timing synchronization across all the devices are within 0.1 microsecond. Record the target accuracy requirement is one microsecond. And as a result, we can see that the robotic arm doesn't miss any objects. On the other hand, if we disable the TSN, now we can see that now the timing synchronization error across the devices now goes up to one millisecond. And then because of this one millisecond accuracy error, we can see that oftentimes the robotic arm end up missing the objects. We can also take a look at the SNR of the devices when we disable the ultra-reliable communications. In this case, you can see that the SNR of the user is getting dropped significantly compared to the URC feature is on. And as a result, we do see a lot of packet goes in error when we uh, disable the ultra-reliable communications. Now let's take a closer look at the conveyor belt in the demo. So here we have uh, multiple devices. We have the RB3 vision camera, which takes the photos of the objects 
and then use the onboard AI for the object recognition and classification. And afterward, it sends this information to the PLC. Then the PLC is going to send out a command to the robotic arm and gates to perform the synchronized behavior. Now let's take a closer look at the conveyor belt in the demo. So here we have uh, multiple devices. We have the RB3 vision camera, which takes the photos of the objects and then uses the onboard AI for the object recognition and classification. And afterward, it sends this information to the PLC. Then the uh, PLC is going to send out a command to the robotic arm and gates to perform the synchronized behavior. Now let's zoom in to how this demo behaves. So we can see that when we disable the TSN, it may miss the projects because of timing asynchronization across the different objects. So now this is a picture of the live demo. So we can see that robotic arm is picking up the objects and place them in different lanes based on the object shape. And then the gates open accordingly. Up to now, we have mostly been focusing on showcasing the ultra reliability and low latency communication, as well as the TSM for industrial IoT. Those are the 5G features which are essential for the Industry 4.0. Uh, one thing which we want to highlight is that in this demo so far, when device 1 wants to talk to device 2, the packet needs to go through the Gino B, which clearly motivates us to enable the direct device to device communication to further improve the system capacity and enhance the system e efficiency. Now let's take a closer look on the sidelink communication in the industriality in the demo. Here we are also going to show the benefit of the sidelink communications. As we mentioned before, without the sidelink, when the two devices want to talk to each other, they have to send the information through the Gino B and then Gino B sends the information to the other device. Here we can see that clearly this two hub communication can be improved by enable the UE to UE sidelink communications. As a result, because we use one hub tra transmission compared to the two hub, we can see that we only need to use almost half of the resources so that we can achieve better network efficiency and capacity. Let's also take a look at the IoT capacity boost with a 5G sidelink. In this particular layout, we have 18 Gino Bs. In a, 20, in a 50 meter by 120 meter layout. And by the way, this is a 3GPP indoor factory layout. And when we disable the sidelink, when the PLC wants to talk to sensor actuator, we need to have two hub transmission, where the first hub can come from PLC to Gino B, when the second hub happens between the Gino B to sensor and actuator. When we enable the side link, we can see that the PLC can talk to sensor actuator directly. As a result, we can see that once we enable the side link communication, we can achieve 1.8 times more capacity compared to the side link is off. Thank you very much.